If you ask a rail fan what one of the greatest locomotives in American railroading is, their answer will most likely be the EMD F40PH. This locomotive gained its legendary reputation for being reliable, versatile, and an icon for Amtrak for decades. Because of its success, many F40s still exist to this day as they have been rebuilt for commuter service, converted into non-power control units, or cabbage cars, or preserved by museums and tourist railroads. One of these F40s saw a number of years on not only Amtrak, but also on luxury lines, Class 1 freight railroads, and Class 3 short lines that would be used for special trains as a heritage unit. All of these unlikely events can only describe the interesting history of engine number 241. In the 1960s, railroads across the nation were losing money in passengers due to increasing competition from road travel and highways. Because of this, the U.S. government stepped in to save the passenger trains as President Richard Nixon signed the Rail Passenger Service Act of 1970, which allowed the government to take over and run most of the remaining passenger trains in the nation. This national rail network would be called Rail Packs, and was eventually changed to Amtrak as service officially started on May 1, 1971. The first few years of their existence was known as the Rainbow Era, as the coach cars and locomotives which Amtrak inherited were from a wide variety of Class 1 railroads. However, the EMDE units which the railroad inherited for regional and long distance services were old and constantly needed to be repaired, so Amtrak started their quest for an efficient diesel locomotive that would not only replace the aging E units, but also last for lifetimes and to become the staple of American railroading. Their first attempt at filling this spot was the EMD SDP40F, which was based on the successful SD40-2 freight locomotive and the FP45 Cal unit. They entered service in 1973, but proved to be an operational nightmare as they suffered from numerous derailments and design flaws, which ultimately led to the retirement of most of the locomotives only a few years after they entered service. After this failure, Amtrak then looked to EMD's main rival, General Electric, to produce a locomotive for the same purpose. GE came up with the P30CH, based on the commonly used U30C freight locomotive in 1974. But these locomotives also suffered from numerous mechanical problems along with the STP-40F. At this time, Amtrak was stuck with aging E units dating back to the 1950s and unreliable six-axle units from EMD and GE, while people were doubting the very future of Amtrak, partially due to the unreliability of their locomotives. When all seemed lost, Amtrak made another attempt for a railroad-saving passenger locomotive, and that's when EMD produced the F-40PH in 1975. The F stood for Full Body Cal Unit, 40 standing for Model 40, the P stood for the passenger variant of their successful GP40 freight locomotive, and the H stood for Head End Power Equipped. With the design flaws of the SDP40F fixed, and with this locomotive being on versatile 4-axle trucks instead of bulky 6-axle trucks, they proved to be much more successful than the existing locomotives on Amtrak's roster and helped improve reliability of Amtrak's passenger trains as a total of 210 F-40s would be produced for Amtrak to be used on their numerous regional and LD trains. In order to replace the STP-40Fs for good, Amtrak traded in 40 of their STP-40Fs to EMD to be rebuilt in the F-40s. These rebuilt F-40s are known as the F-40PHR, with the R representing that they have been rebuilt from STP-40F parts. These variants were identical to the existing F-40s, with some differences including larger fuel tanks and more powerful HEP generators. These variants were acquired beginning in 1975 and were numbered 230 to 409, with the locomotive to be focused on being number 241, using parts from SDP-40F number 581, built in September of 1977. As the backbone to Amtrak's roster, these locomotives ranged system-wide on almost all of their passenger trains, with 241 often being found on West Coast long-distance trains such as the California Zephyr, the Coast Starlight, and the Empire Builder. Despite their outstanding performance and dedication to Amtrak, with most units rounding up over a million miles of service, their seemingly never-ending reign on Amtrak would not last forever, as Amtrak purchased P-42DCs from General Electric to replace the F-40 on most of Amtrak's routes in 1992. With the arrival of more Genesis series locomotives on Amtrak, more F-40s were retired or sold to different railroads, but Amtrak still kept a good number of F-40s on their regional routes, especially in upstate New York on the Empire Corridor. This was especially the case for 241, 
as it was commonly found on um, pulling trains such as the Maple Leaf on the Empire Corridor, the Vermonter in New England, and the numerous regional trains that ran between New Haven and Boston before electrification of the route commenced in 2000. As more Genesis locomotives were entering service across the nation, the F-40s were used less frequently and were used for work or towing service on the two regions. Eventually, 241 was retired and was stored at Albany with a few other F-40s sometime around 2002, a few months before the last run to F-40PH for Amtrak on June 1, 2002. However, before the final run of the F-40, 241 and 315 were bought by an unlikely company that being the Alaska Railroad, who would transport them all the way to Alaska as HEP equipped police units for the railroad's passenger trains for the summer season. They arrived in Alaska as early as May of that year and trailed behind SD-70 Max, providing needed head and power to the passenger cars on the Denali Star, the railroad's flagship train running from Anchorage to Fairbanks. Once the season ended, the F-40s were returned to the mainland where they were purchased by the Montreal, Maine and Atlantic released them often to the American Orient Express for their excursion starting in 2003. HEP equipped F-40s were needed for the luxury railroad since leading freight locomotives used on their trips, such as their GP 40s did not have electrical power for the passenger cars. Once again serving as a trailing one-trick pony power car for coaches, 241 would eventually be bought by another unlikely railroad, the Mexican Class 1 freight railroad known as Ferromex. Throughout 2004 to 2005, 241 was given Ferromex lettering and was used back and forth between AOE trains that ventured into Mexico, as well as Ferromex for some of their passenger trains such as the Ferro Estil Chichua al Pacifico, also known as El Chepe, serving as a trailing HEP power car for both railroads. After a few months of service in Mexico, 241 was left on sidings and was transported by Union Pacific Freight to the Pacific Northwest or it sat for some time with an uncertain fate. However, this locomotive would be given a new life yet again as it would be purchased by the Iowa Northern Railroad, a Class 3 short line in Iowa, for occasional passenger service on their planned Hawkeye Express. Not only was this locomotive purchased for passenger service and special trains on the short line, but it was also slated to be repainted into a Rock Island based livery, since the railroad it would be running for was on former Rock Island trackage. The locomotive emerged from the Railco shops in Juliet, Illinois, in a partial Rock Island livery and was renumbered 678, and was delivered to Waterloo, Iowa around July of 2006. A few weeks later, 678 along with XRTA Pullman Gallery cars were used for the test run of the Hawkeye Express on July 24th in Iowa City, Iowa, with the inaugural one being held on September 6th, with white Rock Island stripes on its side. Finally. The locomotive was given an authentic Rock Island plate on its front around March 2007, thus making 678 a Rock Island Heritage Unit for the Iowa Northern and the first F-40PH Heritage Unit. Other than the Hawkeye Express and our football trains transporting University of Iowa Hawkeyes fans from parking lots to Kinnick Stadium, as well as the Palo Holiday Express, this locomotive was also used for an excursion for the Lexington Group in 2006, the Denver Ski Train in 2010, NRHS Convention Special in 2012, the Snowflake Express for Magical Mix Kids in 2013, and was even reported to be in freight service around 2017. As this locomotive continues to pull football fans and rail fans alike on the Hawkeye Express and other excursion runs, 678 continues its story which is unlike that of any other F-40, while continuing the ongoing legacy of the legendary F-40PH. Thank you everyone for watching this episode of Remarkable Engines. Not only was 678's reputation of being an F-40PH make it last for a long amount of time, but its use for providing HEP made it possible for service on many different railroads and debatably into its career as an excursion locomotive. As the F-40PH was considered the backbone of Amtrak and with many of its kind remaining in service today, it is accurate to say that the F-40 is considered the locomotive that saved American passenger trains. However, no F-40 has had an extensive and unusual history as 241, involving running for Amtrak as one of the last F-40s, serving as a needed HEP-equipped power car for the Alaska Railroad, American Orient Express, and Ferromex, and finally becoming an excursion locomotive and a Rock Island Heritage Unit for an Iowan Class 3 shortline which pulls football fans on a run unlike any other. 
All of these unlikely circumstances is what makes the story of this F40PH unique and truly remarkable. Thank you again for watching and stay tuned next time when I cover the home and horror. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Have a good day.